So this is a Toro Recycler, a 22 inch mower with a single cylinder Kohler engine and it's been sitting for over four years without use. And based on the amount of dust I see on top of this mower, I'd say that's an accurate statement. Well, it won't start and it won't run. Think we can get it up and running again today? You bet your life we can. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, and welcome all to all of my viewers once again. Another video with Buck Small Engine DIY on YouTube where we put the do in the do it yourself. I might actually be a little bit more thorough with this one. You know why? Because this belongs to a, a new friend of mine who lives locally and is a subscriber to the channel and watches all my videos. I was actually, uh, joking with him. I said, look, if you watch all my videos, then shouldn't you be putting the do in the do-it-yourself, fixing this yourself? But sometimes, you know, life is busy and people have other priorities and you just as soon bring it to me. So I'm happy to, to take a look at it and hopefully this video will be of help to you as we get this, we get this mower back in business for him. All right, are you ready? Let's get going. Well, let's verify, first of all, that it, in fact, does not start. I checked it's got fuel. I checked the oil. It's low, but there's oil in there. So let's just see what we got. This has an automatic choke, so we shouldn't have to do anything to choke it. And uh, just give it a shot, see what happens. Everything feels normal, but it doesn't start. I can feel that the engine's got compression as I pull back on the string. So everything there seems fine, but it's just not firing up. So at this point, our first step in the diagnosis is we're going to see if this thing will run even just for a few seconds with some engine starting fluid. So take down the air filter. And we're gonna, this plastic piece will also come right out of the way. And we're gonna shoot some starting fluid directly into the throat of the carburetor. Now this has automatic choke and it's closed. The choke plate is closed now as it should be since the engine's cold. So I'm gonna just open it up so I can shoot in some of the starting fluid. Just like that. And now we're going to attempt to start it again and see if it will run, even briefly, just for a few seconds. Okay, so that's a great initial test and it confirms a lot of things for us. It confirms for us that the engine will start and run. It confirms that it has the proper compression, that it is getting spark, that the timing is correct. It's simply not getting fuel flow through the carburetor and that's why it's not starting and running. So we've made our diagnosis. We've got to do a little bit of carburetor analysis and cleaning to get this back in service. All right, with the mower up on the workbench now, we're going to take a closer look at this uh, carburetor. Is there fuel in the carburetor? Uh, is the needle stuck and not allowing fuel to flow into the carburetor? That could be an issue. Most likely it has sat so long with contaminated fuel in there, ethanol based fuel. It's probably just gummed up and nasty in there, but it has sat for a long time. So this should be interesting, a 10 millimeter to take off these nuts. Uh, this is the breather tube which probably just unplugs from there and this comes off. Move him out of the way. Alright, so that's pretty good. Uh, this bowl has a this carburetor has a, a drain nut. I think I might just crack that loose and see if fuel does come out. 
to verify that we do have fuel in the carburetor. If we do, we'll take a pair of vice grips and just clamp off the fuel line so it doesn't keep running. Hang on. So I'll just try to crack this bolt loose. Yeah, so fuel is coming out, right? So we're going to just go ahead and clamp off the fuel line here. And that should stop the flow of fuel to our carburetor. Alright, so we can take a look here. I don't know if you'll be able to see that much. Definitely some crud in the bottom of that bowl, which you can't see too well, I don't think but yeah we got to drop this carburetor bowl and uh, we're going to take the whole carburetor off and clean it out and that should be all we will need to do to get this back in service one thing that's a little odd to me is well these i'm i'm accustomed to seeing a bracket right here that screws into these two holes and i can see they're threaded and it's sort of like a stability thing for this automatic choke and it's missing here maybe they don't all come with it I don't know so we'll slide this clamp out of the way and then we'll be able to remove this fuel line It's not bad. Uh, now we can pull the uh, carburetor straight out and we'll disconnect these linkages as we go, this wire at the top. Uh, slide this guy this way and this should. Uh, Come straight up. Like that, so it's the throttle linkages. Now we just have this choke linkage. The gasket comes off. So this hook goes up back and under, so I don't know how I can get that off. Put both of the nuts here on there. I'm going to tighten them together. Yeah, I can break loose that stud. Separate these two again. And we'll do the same over on the other stud. Okay, so I managed to break loose these two studs. I'm going to take them right out. And we just have to pay attention to the components behind the carburetor that will come down the gaskets, the spacer, so that when we go to reinstall, we can do it correctly. Okay, so there's the carburetor, then a gasket, then a spacer. There's another gasket, we'll just leave him there. So now I can turn this in such a way that I should be able to get it off the choke linkage. There we go. So now our carburetor's down and we can open it up and give it a good cleaning. So here's the carburetor and I'm going to take off this bowl nut, 10 millimeter. Oh boy. I got it. Don't worry.
and I'd like to take a look inside there. It should be interesting, although we've already drained the gas out of it. But look at the end of that plug. That's some crud on it. So that's indicative of what we're going to see inside. Oh yeah. See that? Yeah, so this, this bowl has been uh, so much crud back there. And, and that just gets up in your main jet. And there's no fuel flow getting through this. So we got to give this a good cleaning. Uh, I'm going to put it through the ultrasonic cleaner. And uh, I want to try to see if I can get that jet out of there. And that's kind of important to get out so I can clean that thoroughly. Sometimes they're just really stuck in there hard. So <sighs> see what we can do. Let's pull the uh, float off. And the needle, this pin comes out, float pops up. There's the needle up there. All right, now I want to get some carburetor spray and see if I can get some of that crud out of there before I try to unscrew the jet. I really hope this will come out. All right. That's in the groove. Oh yeah. That broke loose pretty easily. Don't always get that lucky. So there we go. Uh, this is the main jet. He comes out first. And we're going to get a wire, pick, guitar string, something to clean that out. I don't see any light coming through there. So that's good and clogged. This emulsion tube, we're going to do the same thing. Make sure it's clean and clear. As well as all the little holes that go up the side. So I'm going to do that. Uh, and then we're going to put all of this through the ultrasonic cleaner and give it as thorough cleaning as we possibly can before putting it back together. Once we've done that, we'll, uh, we should have a good running mower. You know what makes a project take longer than it should? Searching around for tools that you think you know where they are but you can't find them. Alright, so this is the idle speed adjustment screw. It's just plastic. I'm taking it out moving it out of the way so then I can get to this jet here and this should pop out because I'd like to be able to clean in there too comes out very easily again small passages and we want to be able to clean them thoroughly You know, with picks or wires or an old bread tie, something sharp, shooting some carb spray through it. But you know, this old fuel turns to varnish, and you do you want to do more than just spray it through. You want to you want to scrape it with a wire or something fine, a needle, a pin, to really clean it out as best you can. And all of this is going to go through the ultrasonic. And that's all we need to do with the carburetor body, I think. Just making sure everything's clean and clear. And then this guy.
These Kohler engines that we're working on today are very much like the Honda engines. And this, this is the guy here. This is the crucial component, in my opinion, to clean him out just as well as you possibly can. Because he, they seem to just make the clearances here just so tight, so small, and they clog up so easily. All right. Not real interesting watching all of this, but it's just necessary steps to uh, got some of these brushes here. Lots of little holes here. I think I get something very fine. Pin, sewing needle. Just make sure everything's clean and clear. All right, so we're just going to put all of these parts into the ultrasonic cleaner. I want to use some very hot water and uh, just some dish soap. And we'll give it four or five minutes spin through there and uh, let the ultrasonic waves do their thing and, uh, and we'll be ready to reassemble. All right, well I reassembled the carburetor after we cleaned it and I think it's good to go. I didn't film the reassembly. It's just the reverse of what we did taking it apart, but I thought maybe you would like to accompany, accompany me on the reinstall because that can be a little bit tricky. So the very first thing I want to do is put on the uh, choke linkage. I'm doing this in the reverse order of what we did to take it off. All right, now I'm going to get my. Uh, actually, we're going to do our our throttle linkages next. There you go. So there's the throttle linkages. Now we got to put everything back up with the studs. That gasket is in place, and then we had that spacer. And there's another gasket that goes right back in there. So let's slide our studs in. And I'm going to hang that gasket onto the uh, studs. And then we're going to slide this back into place. And hopefully get these studs started. All right, so we got it. We got to tighten down those studs. And I want to do it in the same fashion as we did before with the two nuts. So I'm going to put them on. And now we should be able to uh, take it back and tighten that stud. That's probably all it's going to take right there. So break loose these two nuts. Why this guy's so hard? Okay, now we're going to do the same thing on this guy. Tighten these two nuts together, and now we can send the stud home, tighten him down. Oh, 
Okay. Now I can break these two nuts loose. And that's good. Let's go ahead and connect our fuel line. And I'm going to release our clamp on the uh, fuel line. Let it fill up with gas. I'm going to just verify that it's not leaking anywhere. Okay, so when the engine's cold as it is now, choke plate should be closed, so that's all good. Everything seems to be moving correctly. Had this gasket. And then our air cleaner assembly Breather tube plugs in. I don't have a new air filter, I'm gonna have to order one, but I think it's all back together and we can uh, we can put it on the ground and see if it's gonna fire up for us. Okay. <coughs> Place your bets. One pull and it's back up and running. That's pretty exciting. You know what I want to do though? I want to take a peek at the, the uh, automatic choke and make sure it opens. So let's fire it up again and then pull off that air cleaner cover. Yeah, so uh, as the engine heats up, this choke, this automatic choke opens up. And when it opened fully, it was running really, really nice. I'm happy about that. I kind of wish it would open a little bit sooner. Uh, but the mechanism is over here by the muffler. So as that mechanism heats up, it, it pulls the choke open. So the choke's open now. I don't want to keep running it without an air cleaner. I'm going to pick one of those up and then, then I'll feel more comfortable running it. <clears throat> Alright, we did it. That was longer than the promised 10 minutes. But like I said, I want to be a little bit more thorough with this one because it has sat for such a long time. And it, it turned out to be an accurate diagnosis. It was really, really cruddy inside that carburetor. But it's running well now. I, uh, I think I can go ahead and clean it up and I'm going to change the oil and the spark plug and order a new air cleaner. Maybe I'll sharpen that blade so that I can return it in, in uh, as good a shape as possible. But if you got one of these mowers and uh, it'll run on a quick shot of starting fluid but it won't stay running, yeah, it's, it's carburetor work and it's not, it's not hard. Uh, 
a little bit tedious but not exactly hard and hopefully this video help you show you that you can fix your mower if you if you put your mind to it uh, I want to thank you for watching and I invite your comments and questions in the discussion below and I, uh, I look forward to seeing you on our next video and remember guys only you can put the do into do-it-yourself bye